Hi everyone and welcome back out to Harvest Hills Ranch. If you're buying eggs and you're looking at the color of those egg yolks and predominantly buying certain eggs because they have bright orange, what we like to call Kubota orange yolks, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you may be consuming some things that you wish you hadn't been consuming. So we're going to dive into that today. Hey, I'm Dr. Arland Hill and I am passionate about all things nutrition. If it relates to nutrition from the farm to your family to the fork and the foods that you ingest, that's what we talk about here on this channel. So let's talk about these egg yolks and what the possible concerns should be. So I want to first give you some context on this whole idea of orange yolks versus a pale yellow oak being a primary indicator about the overall quality of the egg. And so to do that, I need to remind you guys of why I started farming again. For those of you that don't know, I grew up in a farming family for my early childhood into my 20s. I was around row crop farming and that's what my family did and engaged in. And as I got into my professional career trying to instruct individuals and, and educate my patients on food and realizing that they were having trouble finding the food that I was advising them to consume, my wife and I, Leah, started, we just made the decision it was time to go back and we were going to start being a food producer ourselves. And so that way we would have no questions about the quality of the food that we were going to make available to patients and what they were going to be consuming. We could just scratch that off because we knew we weren't going to compromise. And so the idea here is that there were there was not going to be anything that was going to be hidden. We were going to be completely transparent in what we produced. What we quickly found out, and the, re the reason that I'm sharing this with you, what we quickly found out is that transparency is not the norm when it comes to the food supply. In fact, many things are hidden. Many things are not disclosed in the way that they should be disclosed and it's not until you become a producer and you understand all aspects of the food supply system that you actually begin to see these things the average consumer would have no way of seeing these and if i hadn't have been on the producer side of our topic today then i wouldn't be bringing this video to you in the first place so understand that as context now what about these egg yolks and what about this color well, is that actually an indicator for quality of egg? It might be. So there are some indications that we can take away from the from that orange yolk color. But the question I would ask you on this is, is that yolk color being produced naturally or is that being produced artificially? And when I say artificially, I don't necessarily mean that it's an artificial ingredient that's being used, but Inherently, when we look at this, look at the natural rhythms, the, the ebb and flow of the seasons as we move in from spring and summer, where we see a lot of color in our environments, and then we transition into fall and winter, where we see the leaves fall in, the green, all the colors, all the vibrant colors are starting to go away, and they're being replaced by brown, and if you're from the north, the, the snow, the white. And so we just don't see as much variety in color overall when we look at the natural rhythm of the seasons, Why is that important? Well that's important because that directly affects the color of these yolks. When you look at the color of that yolk, if we think about the carotenoid value, which is predominantly what that's an indicator of, is if the carotenoids are high in that egg yolk, then you're going to have a more orange yolk. If the carotenoids aren't high in that yolk, then you're not going to have, uh, the, the, if the carotenoids aren't high, you're going to have a more pale yellow appearance to the yolk. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the egg is bad. Now, where am I going with this? Well, we've been led to believe that this, this color of the yolk is the end-all be-all when it comes to the quality of the egg. And again, I'm not saying it's not a criteria that we shouldn't consider, but it shouldn't be the final decision maker. So what we need to think about with this is because there has been a demand and because that has been the primary indicator of egg quality, producers and even more so than that, the, the companies, and herein lies the problem, right? Because we know companies are driven by profits. 
but the companies that are associated with the feed system are inherently adding in coloring agents because the end consumer has been led to believe that if that egg color is a bright orange, they have a better product. But there's a problem with this, okay? And this is what I want to share with you. So to really make this story complete, I'm going to share a couple of slides that detail some facts for you. And what I want you to see from this is exactly what I like to call our authority Thoxyquin story, and you're probably looking at me going, what in the world is a Thoxyquin? Well, I'm going to introduce you to a Thoxyquin today, and a Thoxyquin is something that if it hadn't showed up at my farm and I hadn't caught it before we started before we started using that, uh, that delivery of feed, then we could have made a huge mistake that could have literally cost us weeks if not months of getting that out of our system but thankfully I caught it and it didn't happen but what is it well let me show you our thoxyquin story so let me pull up these slides what you see on the screen right here is the label it's an actual picture of the label that showed up to my farm and there were a couple of things that were wrong with this label the the, the entire batch of feed was was wrong from start to finish but there were a number of things that caught my attention, the least of which was the fact that there was a chemical in here that I was not familiar with. And you can see it printed out right there on the label of Thoxyquin. Mineral oil is probably, as a petroleum byproduct, going to catch some of your eyes as well. These are things that I don't approve and don't show up in our feed. And like I said, this was completely mishandled. But the Thoxyquin showed up. And interestingly enough on this, when I called our feed supplier about it, what I ultimately found out was the addition of a, of a Thoxyquin had not been disclosed to them either. So this was not actually a, an issue with my feed supplier. It was an issue with the vendor that provides a coloring ingredient to them. And so again, this is what the reason that this Thoxyquin comes into the conversation is because this is part of a mix that includes cayenne and marigold, these compounds in nature, the, the, the pepper, the flour, that are going to be high in these carotenoids. They, these carotenoids are added in to increase that color of the yolk, but the problem comes in because this ethoxyquin is added into this, and it's again, it's not being disclosed. Now, here's where I want to go with this. I want to show you really why this ethoxyquin is such a problem because this is a, a chemical, like I said, being in the healthcare arena, paying attention to toxic chemicals that my patients are exposed to, looking at lab reports with this, uh, being on the production side of, uh, of a regenerative farm. This was not anything that I had ever seen. So what actually is this product? Well, to understand this, it is an antioxidant is actually what this is. Uh, that's what it is considered. Now, you have to understand that this is not an antioxidant like a vitamin A, a vitamin C. Uh, it does prevent oxidation, hint, antioxidant, but it is a synthetic substance. Now, as far back as you'll see here on the screen, as 1985, there was evidence showing that this had a relationship with cancer. Many of you are probably familiar or have at least heard of BHA, BHT, this falls in the same category as those compounds. And again, these are proven to be carcinogenic. Now, there's a couple of other interesting things about this that I think you want to know about here. So look at this from the outset. You'll see in this particular review article, it was shown that ethoxyquin is an antioxidant used in animal feed. And so if you look at the name of this, this would make most people stop in their tracks. So let me give you this name. It's 6 ethoxy 12 dihydro 224 trimethylquinoline If you came across that name on any other label, you would immediately reject that product, whether it be a food, whether it be something that maybe a, if you're a, a producer raising your own animals, if that showed up on your farm, you would immediately pause as soon as you saw that. 
Hence the reason they shortened the name to Athoxyquin. Now, just so you understand, it was an animal feed that showed up at my farm, and it is permissible to use this in animal feed. However, it is not allowed to be used in anything that is geared towards human consumption, with the exception of spices and chili. But interestingly enough, it can pass from the feed of the animals, whether that be the poultry, whether that be the egg production, it can pass over to humans. So there is a direct transmission route associated with this. Now, as if that wasn't enough by itself right there, the one thing that you probably need to know and that would definitely steer you away from this had you known about it, is that it is produced by Monsanto. That's right, the same company that brought us glyphosate, that brought us Agent Orange, the, the track record is just dismal when we start to talk about Monsanto. So there's nothing that we should trust in their prior history. Why are we trusting anything as it relates to Athoxyquin? So certainly some issues have been raised here. Interestingly enough, the initial approval associated with this was uh, given based on studies that Monsanto themselves had performed. So again, the producer not not for the farm, the chemical producer in this instance, is actually the one that's producing the safety study. Conflict of interest? Yeah, I would say so. And how about this? So if what I've shared with you up to this point isn't enough for you, you should be aware that within the last year, this study came out. So you can see here December of 2020, and it showed that there was a development of a human biomonitoring method that assessed the exposure to a toxiquin. And this has been this is something that was implemented in the uh, European Union. They seem to be a bit more proactive in getting stuff like this implemented. But ultimately, there is clear association that because of this is because of this being used in animal products and because of this transmission that there can be an increased exposure when we start to talk about humans and this can have a direct detrimental effect for us and we we need to have some surveillance of this now i showed you prior how <clears throat> how this could be linked to cancer formation is that all that we see with this well it's actually not so here's evidence that shows that there's dna damage which can be associated with cancer but this is directly dna damage induced by ethoxyquin in human peripheral lymphocytes those are the immune system cells remember your immune system needs to be adaptable it needs to be on constant surveillance to handle threats and challenges that are coming from the outside environment and so now what we're seeing is that the the lymphocytes that circulating uh, immune system cell is being damaged. It's not a healthy cell. It's not going to do its job in carrying out its surveillance and protection role. And again, not a surprise when we start to talk about the uh, exposure to toxic chemicals, they're going to make our immune system dysfunctional. So where does that leave us in this whole conversation? Well, I think it brings forth two points. One is it says that we really need to get to know our farmers and who's producing our food. It's fine that you go buy these products on the shelf in the grocery store where you're 100% disconnected from who produced that and there's no transparency. You have no way of going back to that farm and they are using the idea that the consumer is going to buy into this color yoke concept and they're taking advantage of you on that. You need to go meet local farmers. You need to see who is producing food in your area and go see their operation. Talk to them. Ask them questions. See what they're doing. Take a tour of their farm. We hold farm tours here at Harvest Hills Ranch because we want people to see how our operation works. If the exact opposite is happening where you can't see that operation, you need to ask questions why that is the case. That's the first point. The second point that I think is important to ask in this does come back to the nutrition. And are those carotenoids important? Absolutely they are. Are they valuable? Unquestionably. We know that there is a, a, a strong antioxidative effect from those carotenoids. They're going to be protective in a number of different systems throughout our body. However, there are some things that we need to ask beyond that. So for example, 
what is the fatty acid profile of these eggs? The, the yolks are such a strong component to that. They're a vital component, better stated, to that overall egg. And they have a high fat content. What is the fatty acid ratio of those uh, of those yolks? Uh, we should also be asking what other nutrients. So, for example, we have a fat in there, the fat-soluble nutrients in that yolk, the A, the E, the D, the, the K. What, what is Where are all these nutrients? What is the status of these nutrients? And then we should also be thinking about metabolites in there like choline, things that are so essential and valuable for liver function, for brain health, for our memory and our cognition. Those are the questions we need to be asking. We don't need to get hyper fixated on one simple aspect of, the, of that food and let that be the end all be all. We need to understand that food, as it is inherently designed by God, as it should be consumed, has a plethora of nutrients in it. And hyperfixating on any one single nutrient absolutely misses how that food supports our overall biochemistry and metabolism. So think about that as you're looking at making your selection on your eggs. Get to know your local farmer and Ask the right questions and, hey, is there a time and a place for that for that orange yolk? Absolutely. You're much more likely to see that in the spring and in the summer. And this also differs by region. Uh, just as an example, here in Texas, in southeast Texas, when winter comes around, everything turns brown. And so there's not a lot of color in the environment. But in the northern half of the state where I have some cattle producer friends that also raise chickens as well we see that when i visit their farms in the cooler in the cool season that they have plants that are growing that just don't grow in my grow zone so seasonal variability and regional variability all play into this conversation it is not as simplistic it is as it is made out to be and more importantly i want you as the consumer to be aware of what concerns what potential uh, toxins or toxicants could be in your food supply that you're not being told about. And I also, if you're a producer listening to this, you as a producer have a, a responsibility to deliver a high quality, high nutritional value food to the end consumer. And you should be asking these same questions all along your supply chain as well. So with that being said, guys, hey, as always, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. If you're looking for uh, pasture raised, grass fed, grass finished beef, pastured poultry, free range eggs. If you're looking for the criteria and the quality that I've been talking about in this video, then check out harvesthillsranch.com. And if you're interested in your own health and trying to optimize that and the work that I do on my clinic side, go to drarlandhill.com and find out more about the work that I'm doing and the resources that I have available to you. Until next time, I'm Dr. Arlen Hill. I look forward to seeing you very soon.